In this session, we're going to see a few more features of macros. These are mostly conveniences that will help you write more sophisticated macros more easily, but there is also one peril you need to keep in mind. In the process, we'll also see a bit more about truthy falsy behavior. Let's start with a simple example. In many languages, we have a one-armed if, that is, a conditional that has only one body, unlike the if we've seen in racket, which requires code for both branches. But it's also common to want to do something only if a condition is false, a file is not open, a packet was not received, and so on. So let's define a macro called unless for a one-armed conditional that only evaluates the body if the condition is false. Otherwise, it returns a neutral, void value. The macro definition might look something like this. And we can use it as follows. When we look at the pattern in the macro definition, we know that it'll only be used if the first word after the parenthesis is unless. Therefore, there's no need to repeat it. As a result, it is conventional to write an underscore, meaning don't care, in this position, which we indeed don't care about because we know exactly what it will be, giving us this definition instead. Okay, that was the convenience. Now to the really interesting part. Observe how unless uses not. But what if we were to bind not statically around the use of the macro? Consider this expression. This not definitely doesn't perform negation. Therefore, there's a real concern about what might happen here. If this is the not that the macro uses, then the macro will do the opposite of what we want. This would be really unfortunate because it means macro users have to worry about something rather similar to dynamic scope and a macro author can never be quite sure about what their code will do because they can never quite tell what names might be bound at the macro's use site. Well, let's run it. We find that Dr. Racket does the right thing. To see why, let's fire up the macro stepper. In the expansion, we can click on the two knots. Observe that when we click on the knot bound by the let, the knot inside the macro does not get an arrow. It's also a different color. Essentially, Dr. Racket is keeping the two knots separate. Internally, it does this by giving them different consistent names, but we don't have to worry about how it works. All we need to know is that it will do the right thing and give us a rough analog of static scope. This property is called hygiene. That is, the macro is set to be hygienic, and this is the major and critical feature. Now, you might be skeptical and say this only happens because not is some sort of top-level built-in function. It's good to be skeptical. To explore this, let's look at a more complicated example. This will take us a few steps and illustrate several things. Let's start by defining a two-armed OR. This seems to work well enough. But ask yourself, what is... Observe how the value is not just a two-valued Boolean, but actually gives us a compound answer. This is an important idiom in languages with complicated truthy falsy rules. An operation can return a non-trivial value, not only true or false. Racket's member, for instance, returns the entire rest of the list starting with the found element because that could be useful in some cases. So now let's suppose we put this in an OR2. This produces true, which is much less useful than the return value of member. This is the important idiom about truthy, falsy languages. Instead, we want something that returns the actual value, not just true or false. To get that, we need to adapt the macro, which does the right thing. Now let's try a slightly different use of OR2. 
Before running this, what do you expect? In particular, how many times do you want hello to print? When we run it, we find that it prints twice. The macro sh stepper shows us why. Every reference to the pattern variable copied its code, so the print also got copied. That's really not what we wanted. This is the peril in macro definitions that you need to be aware of. So here's a better macro. It uses a local variable to keep track of the value of the first expression. This does the right thing with our previous example. But now we have a new worry. What if we use v outside the macro? Suppose, for instance, we wrote, stare at this example for a moment. What would you want it to produce? Now consider what would happen if the program were expanded in a naive way. It would expand to, which of course produces the wrong answer. But when we run the original version, we see that it produces the expected answer. That's because it expands to something more like We can again see this graphically in the macro stepper. Observe how the two V's look different, and clicking on the two V's shows where they are bound and that the two V's are not interfering with one another. This again is hygiene at work. In fact, hygiene always works automatically without us having to even ask for it or even think about it. This means macro writers can use whatever variables make most sense without at all worrying about what variables the user is using, exactly in the same way as when you write a function or method in languages with static scope, you don't have to worry about variable names in the caller. Be aware that many macro systems are not hygienic. In particular, C's macros are not, so they can cause many subtle problems that are very hard to debug. These days, however, languages that add macro systems tend to make them hi more hygienic so that examples like the above work naturally. Okay, one last point about generalizing macro definitions. Observe that because of parenthetical syntax, there is no reason for OR to be limited to do just two sub-expressions. It can have more, or for that matter, even fewer. You may recall seeing dot 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 which represents zero or more of the preceding pattern. So you may be tempted to write, however, this doesn't really work. The pattern as defined handles one or more subterms. E1 is the one required subterm, and E2 dot 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 represents zero or more ones. When we peel one off, we have one fewer subterm in the recursion. This means eventually we get to zero subterms, which this macro can't handle. We can easily fix that by defining the base case. What is OR with no arguments? It's the identity for OR, which is false. And that concludes our tour of some interesting macro features.